Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Lord Jesus, make us worthy to celebrate the exaltation of your glorious cross with sacred hymns and psalms. When you appear on the last day and the sign of your cross will shine brighter than the sun, gather us before you and surround us with your eternal light that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory and honor and praise to the Savior who made the wood of the cross a strong fortress for his flock and established it as a sign of the covenant for the salvation of his inheritance. By his cross he exalted his church and gave joy to all the people who believed in it. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. O Christ, our God, by your precious cross, you have given us perfect salvation and made us worthy to celebrate this feast with hymns of praise proclaiming, Blessed are you, O Lord of the Holy Cross, for you erased Adam's curse and restored his banished children to their inheritance. Blessed are you, O Holy Cross, for you united heavenly and earthly beings. Blessed are you, O Holy Cross, for you fulfilled the words of the prophets, enlightened the apostles in their preaching, crowned the martyrs for their faith, and honored the confessors for their loyalty. Now, O Christ, our Savior, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to make the celebration of the feast of the exaltation of your Holy Cross a sign of security and peace. By your cross, exalt your holy church, guide her shepherds, adorn her priests with virtue, purify her deacons, help the elderly, educate children, direct the young, protect orphans, care for widows, and grant rest in your dwellings to the light of light to our brothers and sisters who have died hoping in you. May we find your refuge in your shadow of your holy cross on the great day of your second coming, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever.
Jesus Christ, our Lord, accept these prayers and the fragrance of the incense that we have offered on the feast of the exaltation of your holy cross. May its sign always be visible before our eyes to strengthen us, that we may walk with you toward death and then stand at your right hand to celebrate the feast of your eternal victory. We glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever. Kadi Shantalo Kadi from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, concerning times and seasons, you have no need for anything to be written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster will come upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overcome you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. Those who sleep go to sleep at night, and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we are of the day, let us be sober. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and the helmet that is hope for salvation. For God did not destine us for wrath, but to gain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, 
as indeed you do. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The message about the cross is foolishness for those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved. to the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. I burn this incense. Give you this song. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. <clears throat> Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Matthew, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, and listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the Word of the Living God. The Lord Jesus says, Who then is the faithful and prudent servant whom the master has put in charge of his household to distribute to them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on his arrival finds him doing so. <clears throat> Amen, I say to you, he shall put him in charge of all his property. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is long delayed, and he begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards, the servant's master shall come on an unexpected day and an hour unknown. And he will punish him severely and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and bless be to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, for giving us his words of life. Praise and bless be to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has set over his household in order to give them their food at the proper time? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Today is the Feast of St. Thomas the Apostle. And for most people, they remember the apostle as being doubting Thomas, the one who would not accept the resurrection being testified by the other apostles, having seen our Lord, unless he himself personally saw. But of course, we forget there's an also detail in St. Thomas's life. In the moment just before, it's probably about the month before our Lord's arrest and his passion, and there on the other, the apostles are with our Lord on the other side of the Jordan, so they're east of Jerusalem. And it's the period of time where Martha and Mary and their brother and Lazarus is sick. And they send message to them over the other side of the Jordan saying, the one that you love 
is ill. And of course, it initiates a whole series of events which will lead to the resurrection, resuscitation of Lazarus from the dead. But what our Lord does in waiting there for those days, he waits for Lazarus to die, the story you know. But there's a detail in it that when our Lord says, now we go back, and the other apostles are terrified because they know that the temple authorities are looking to arrest our Lord. And it's Thomas who steps forward at that moment and he says to the others, let's go with him so that we can die with him. So they have no, they have no doubts as to what's going to be happening in these next few weeks. They don't know how it's going to happen, they just know this is going to come to, in their minds, a bad end. But Thomas shows a great generosity by saying, well, we'll go with him too. And if he's going to die, we'll all die with him. Of course, we know the story later on is when, they, when push comes to shove and the moment came for our Lord's arrest, they all ran away. But that moment of the, the, the few weeks before by Thomas making that comment shows a great generosity and St. Thomas, of course, is the apostle which is associated with the Church of Antioch in our Syriac tradition, especially the Church of Edessa, because he evangelized throughout the Middle East, Mesopotamia and that region. And then he continued preaching through Persia and then down into the subcontinent of India. And he finishes his days by being martyred. He's killed by the Hindu priests on the eastern coast of the subcontinent of India. That's a long way to go. Most of the apostles stayed Egypt, eastern Mediterranean. Thomas goes as far out as any of the apostles that we know went. So it shows a great generosity, but of course he's the apostle associated with our church, our tradition, the Middle East. But it's that great generosity that Thomas does, even after recovering along with the other apostles after Pentecost, to be able to preach the gospel and bring the divine mysteries for the redemption of the world to so many people. And we are the descendants of those people. Because those people obviously receive this faith and receive the divine mysteries, and then they themselves generously pass that faith on to others, whether by family within the households to the children, or by those who accepted the evangelical councils and became religious, monks, hermits, the sisters, the nuns, the priests. And through that priesthood we continued another generation, and another generation, and another generation. And that's how it's always worked for the last 20 centuries. So the question becomes for us then is, what do we do in our generation? If those people had not been faithful in the 300s, in the 600s, in the 900s, in the 1200s, if they had not been, if they had not been generous and faithful in a generation, they would have broken a chain and a link. Many of the people in the Middle East today, we would say probably most of them at this point, their ancestors were Christians. At one point, they embraced the gospel. Somewhere along the line, usually probably about the 12th or the 13th century, <clears throat> they dropped the faith and they became Muslims. But when Islam comes to the north in the 600s, so the period of time between that first century of St. Thomas up into the early 600s, those five centuries, had people who were faithful and the thing continued to spread and to propagate. So that when the Muslims came from the South, the majority of the Middle East was Christian. <clears throat> Which is why we can say the people who live there now, the vast majority of them, their ancestors at some point were Christians from that faith from Thomas the Apostle. And somewhere along the line, someone's grandfather grandmother decided I'm done with this and the children then were reared Muslim and their children Muslim and their children Muslim until this day 
So the question that we come to our generation is what do we do in our own time? We're only on this earth for a small amount of time. And that's the gospel today. Who is the faithful and the wise servant that the master places over his household to distribute food, nourishment at its due season, due time? And of course, you notice that what's in the parable, first of all, there's a beautiful thing I wanted to point out because I italicized it in the bulletin, in the gospel, in the Syriac translation. It says to those not to distribute to the household. If you notice, it says to distribute to the children in due time. It's oriented toward the future in the Syriac translation. And what our Lord is saying is that, of course, everything you have, everything that we've received, we have been given, given to us. The families even that we're born into was given to us. You know, in this day, in the social media, and in the papers and all that, they're always talking about privilege. Privilege, privilege. And sometimes they make it racist. They're talking about white privilege. And the problem is about that is that no one can be held guilty because of the family they're born into. And you, there's no way you can make them feel guilty because of the context of the household or the parents that they received by an act of creation. They have no choice over that. So it's absurd to talk about it as if somehow it's an obligation for you to do something based on that. And of course, the racist question is just absurd. For Catholics, there's only one race of humanity. We are all the children of Adam and Eve. Races are an artificial construct. There's only one human race. But there is something true in this modern day hysteria. And that is the recognition that our basic foundation of our lives were given to us. We won't call it privilege, it's just simply what God gave as the master of creation allowed us to be born here. And of course we talk about poverty in the United States and all that, and it is sad how many people live below what we rank as being poverty. But our poverty has nothing to do with the poverty of the vast majority of the world. All you have to do is travel to see what poverty really looks like. So many of our poor people walk around with $1,000 phones in their pockets. So that's obviously telling you that it's a relative notion of poverty in the United States of America. But you go to India and the back of the back villages and that, and you just really see poverty. You really see what it is to live on a dollar a day or 50 cents a day. So there is a basis here, not of guilt or of race, but there is a realization which our Lord always taught is that what you have has been given to you as a gift. And in our own lives, we are nothing but stewards of what God has committed to our care. And you'll notice that in this parable that what our Lord talks about is that the, the steward is considered evil, wicked, bad. He's bad in his stewardship because what does he do? He stops, he looks at his watch, he looks at the calendar, and he's like, well, you know, the guy's not going to get back for a long time now. We've got at least a year, two years, whatever, you know, and I'm in charge of the pantry. And so because of that, this is, it's long time, we're told. He starts eating and drinking with drunkards, it means he's throwing parties. He's using this rich pantry of all these things and he's being frivolous. And the other servants who work with him, well, I'm the steward here, I'm in charge. So you wax that floor again, it wasn't perfect. He's abusing them and he's abusing his authority because he lives under the illusion that the boss isn't going to be back for a long time. And it's why we're told that no matter when the master returns, he's going to be returning at an unexpected day and an unexpected hour. Because the man's distracted. He's whooping it up with all the stuff he's been given charge of. And so no matter when the boss comes, even if it's foreseen, He's still going to be distracted and it's going to be a surprise. And our Lord says, but this is not the way you're meant to be. And of course, remember, this is all in the context of the last day, of the day of judgment. 
All of these Sundays, most of them are from the Gospel of St. Matthew. And our Lord is telling us that you do not know the hour of your day or your death or when this is going to come, when judgment, when our Lord is going to appear. So don't look at the goods that you own, he says in this parable, as if they're yours. Otherwise, you're nothing different than the wicked servant who just whoops it up. Nice that I have my house and camp and vacations and another house for retirement in Phoenix, Arizona. Nice that I have all of these things. But in the end, they're not mine. And doubtless I have some niece or nephew or grandchild who's just waiting for me to kick the bucket so they get the camp. And then they can am empty out all of grandpa's junk out of the house that he's been accumulating for 40 years. Because that's human nature. But what our Lord is pointing out, and the notion of privilege does have a foundation, which is the aspect of gratitude. And the realization that the things that we do have, we have responsibility over to be used correctly in the service of the master. <clears throat> so that we don't live in illusion and distraction and just whip it up. Now this is connected with St. Thomas because of that investment. Let us go with him and die with him at least. If this is gonna finish catastrophically, let's all die together. It's very generous. But because of the life that he has, especially from Pentecost, investing in that spread of the gospel and the divine mysteries, he winds up establishing something which is way beyond his life and that we are heirs to. Now that's St. Thomas. We can't imit duplicate his life. But we can imitate that understanding that we're only here for a while, right? St. Shakespeare talks about, we're each an actor on a stage for a certain moment, flailing our arms around, doing our speech, and then we go off stage. And it's done. And our Lord himself is telling us that's what it is. How do we invest in our stewardship to be using this time and these things that have been committed to our care? If we look to the example of St. Thomas the Apostle, then we understand that we should invest and live the way that we have the things of our stewardship in such a way that they continue to have life after us. I've told you the story of the woman that I knew in Australia when I used to visit her in the last year of her life. Well, I don't know, she was still alive when I left Australia. But what she was doing is she was just, every time I went to her house, it was more and more empty. She's just giving everything away. I was, I was complimenting her on, I don't know, some piece of statue that she had there. And she says, Father, take it. And then she said, I don't need it. All I need is the chair that I'm in, a table in my kitchen, and a chair there. That's all I need. So I watched this woman over at least that one year in great joy, just giving away everything. She knew to whom it went. She knew that it would be taken care of. She knew that they wanted it. It wasn't just going to be the niece coming in and shoveling it all out into the dumpster for goodwill. And it, it was a great amount of wisdom on her part because she was also becoming free. And so it's a perfect example of what our Lord is saying here, that the steward who is appointed to the goods that they have is to distribute the goods to the family, to those around them in their due season. And all of that is to bring together, as next week I don't have the occasion to be able to preach to you, is that Bishop Gregory has asked us to lay out for October 13th, which would be next week, but this week we'll talk about it to finish with this, is that the Order of St. Charbel. The Order of St. Charbel was established decades ago in order to establish a foundation that would be solidified for the future of the Maronite Church in, in the United States. And the members that enter into it form this fraternity. They form a solidarity. They're invested, they have a, a red, uh, they have a yellow and white ribbon, they have a medal and the cross of St. Charbel. Annually, they have a breakfast together at the NAM convention. Nationally, they come from all around the country. But the members enter into it as stewardship. They enter to form the foundation, specifically in the focus of that backbone that runs through the church, which is the holy priesthood. 
So in one way, the foundation is meant to help with the retirement of the priests who have served their decades in the vineyard of the Lord. So that they have in their later years solidity, if you want, security. But I would say even more importantly, the foundation is meant to aid in the education of seminarians. If we don't have priests, you don't have a church. And so Mrs. Weeder made a very exuberant entryway of the seminarians who are now studying in Washington at the, in, the, in the Front Street entrance. As a reminder today, until next week especially for the Order of St. Charbel Sunday, and that's why I pointed out to you in the beginning the gospel. To give to the children in due season. The boys that are studying, most of them are, are young. Those are the children in the future. We have a possibility through the order of St. Charbel to invest in something, to give priests for the future, men who will be bringing the sacred mysteries and the gospel in the year 2075, who knows? We're all supposed to live forever, right? If you're born in the 21st century, you're supposed to live well over 100. Who knows? Who really cares, right? Because that's not what we're here for. But the investment means that at that point, we can, we can imitate that woman in her freedom of giving away things already now to where we want it to be, by free choice when it's meritorious. We can also imitate St. Thomas saying, well, if we're going to go through with this, let's go through it to the very end. And so you have the forms that are at both of the entranceways, and you also have it printed up in the bulletin for next week. Because Bishop Gregory wrote no less than three times to remind us you've got to preach on this in October. And so here you go. And we've worked out perfectly with this gospel and the investment of the goods that God has given us, how do we want it to have life for the future? I'd recommend one possibility is to invest, to enter the order of St. Charbel and to use that stewardship for the future of our Holy Church as children of St. Thomas and for the future through the sacred priesthood through the young men who study now, who give their lives completely in celibacy and renounce family and everything for you and your children. And surely if these young men who renounce everything of their own personal, professional lives in order to enter the consecration of priesthood, deserve our devotion as good stewards of the goods that God has confided to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
suffered death on the third, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the seen Tell what my deb head a loho, while what a loho dam hard a tayo. Rain of silver tayo top, and in the light of west wood, hayat no more to Lord in God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Saints Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Thomas. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
continue on page 835, the anaphora of St. Mark, 835. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, Almighty Father, you are true and holy love. May we be bound by your divine love and find joy in it all the days of our lives. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss that through Jesus Christ our Lord we may be your radiant and blameless flock. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. before you and ask that you grant us in your mercy the riches of your grace and kindness. May your compassion and assistance sustain us all the days of our lives through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Holy God and Father, you sent your only Son to save us, for we are weak and poor. When we had gone astray, he brought us back to your spiritual fold by his royal blood. Through your grace and the favor of your only Son, we implore you to accept this bloodless sacrifice from our sinful hands, and through it to forgive our sins. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly glory, thanks, praise, and honor are yours, O God the Father, maker of all creation, with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. The angels, archangels, and all the heavenly hosts bless and praise you. They cry out and they proclaim. your only Son and your Holy Spirit, when we had strayed from you by transgressing your law, 
You sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By his saving passion, he restored us to our original inheritance, and he gave us life by his divine blood. Pretty Eleison, Wabiyamu Haudoktum Hashon Dilema Bedhayim. And Sabe Lachmo Mida Kodi Chanton, O Barahu Kadesh, Waxoya Belitalimita, O Kado Mara, Sabahola Mene Kolocho, Hono Denita, Faro. Dahluf aikun wahlaf sagiye me taqseu me tihab Khusayun khumme wa khayid al-qalam al-meen Khanna al-Qusa damzih wa min hamrahu min mayo Barah hu qadeh Kabil talmidao karo mara Sabishtaw mehne kul khuhu Khuno denita Dimahu dila dia tiki khadato Dahlo faikun wahlaf sagiye Me te shadu me ti heb Khusuyan khawbe wa khayyid al-qalam al-ameen Whenever you observe these commandments, you proclaim my death and resurrection until I come again. In memory of death, O Lord, we profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. Lord Jesus Christ, we remember your plan of salvation for us, your conception, birth, and baptism, your saving passion, and life-giving death, your burial, your glorious resurrection, and ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your royal second coming when you will judge all people and reward them according to their deeds. Now we ask you, at that fearful hour, have compassion on us and have mercy on us in your kindness and forgive our sins in your mercy. For this your church implores you and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. The pious descent he may make this spread the body of Christ our God. 
make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the pardon of faults, the, upil the honor, upbuilding, and strengthening of your holy church and the protection of her children from all sin. And may these holy mysteries allow us to stand with confidence before your awesome throne, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, exalt your holy church established throughout the world. Protect your shepherds of the true faith in peace and security all the days of their lives. Especially Francis of the Pope of Rome, Bashara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops, pious priests, pure deacons, and all who serve your holy altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who call upon your holy name. Bless those who are near, bring back those who are far. Visit the sick, strengthen the weak, release captives, and assist the oppressed. Bring back those who have strayed, that they may live in your fear, and reward those who have brought offerings to your holy church. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and all the children of your holy church. Grant them security and peace and keep domestic and foreign conflicts far from them so they may live in tranquility. Protect them by the sign of your living and victorious cross. Rescue the persecuted and the displaced of your flock and be a refuge for strangers and a companion to travelers. Grant your eternal reward to monks to those who live solitary lives, and to hermits who live on the mountaintops and in caves of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, upon this altar and upon your heavenly altar, the holy and ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, confessors, and evangelists, John the Baptist, the forerunner, Stephen, the archdeacon and first martyr, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, St. Thomas, and all the saints. May we join in their ranks and share in their joyful feast. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the faithful teachers who have gone to their rest in the true faith especially Peter and Paul, Mark, Clement, Ignatius, Dionysus, Julius, and all those who endure suffering and persecution for the strengthening of your holy church. Remember also those who serve your holy altar and forgive their sins, that they may reach your joyful dwellings. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those who have left this world and have gone to you. Lead them to your joyful dwellings and blot out all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have forgiven. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever.
the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself in his blood. For your mercy, may I pray your eyes like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory. O God the Father, you are merciful and compassionate. You have sanctified this divine service and have perfected it in your good pleasure. By the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit, sanctify us now that we may be renewed as your spiritual children, so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O glorious Father and lover of all people, praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation of soul and body, and crush our enemy, the evil one. Grant us your mercy through Christ Jesus our Lord, for you are blessed and glorified with him, and with your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, look upon us, your inheritance, who bow before you, and guide our steps on your right path. Make us worthy to share in this sacrifice, and may it sanctify the souls and bodies of those who receive it through Christ Jesus our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy, holy Father, Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life, O Lord our God, to you be glory.
thank you, Lord. Praise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood. We love of all people. Have mercy on us. O oh God the Father, how can we, who are unworthy, thank you for your grace? For you have given us this divine gift and have made us worthy to share in the body and blood of your only begotten Son, who saved us. Through him and with him, glory and honor are due to you and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, you are worshipped and you are holy. Bless and forgive the priests who are the stewards of your people and of your holy church. Forgive the servers of your divine mysteries and all the faithful who have shared in this sacrifice. Care for orphans, help widows, assist the poor and the distressed, satisfy the hungry, and protect all who call upon your holy name in every place. May your name be glorified with that of your Father and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God 
to whom be glory forever.